Today guys, I'm going to update you on the latest progress on the tax bill that's going on right now. So let's talk about it. Why does it matter? And this is stuff you need to know if you're a crypto investor. So chances are you have already heard something about the new crypto laws that may be implemented in the United States. I have talked about this previously. And uh, yeah, so if you've been watching my channel, you definitely know about it. But the actual content of the proposed bill and uh, the laws have been changed numerous times since uh, they were proposed. So today I'm going to explain what exactly is included in the most recent version, when it is being voted on, and how the new laws would affect crypto in the United States and the rest of the world if they are passed. These laws are potentially going to have a massive effect on the crypto markets, so make sure to stick around to hear everything about them. Before I get started, make sure to subscribe and also activate the bell icon so you do not miss out on more videos like this as well as everything else I post here on the channel. So to start off with a little bit of background first. So the proposed changes to crypto laws are related to how it is taxed and are being included in the content of a big infrastructure bill that has the support of both parties of the political system. So some of you may be wondering why crypto tax law changes are being included in an infrastructure bill and you would be right to do so. In fact, one of the biggest complaints people are having with the proposed law is that they were included in this bill at the very last minute with very little forethought or consideration to the effects that they would have because the SEC requested for some regulatory groundwork to be laid out as soon as possible. The issue with doing that, however, is that crypto is complicated, even for people who do it for a living, and even more so when you have to describe parts of it in a language that is legally binding and tries to cover all different potential cases that lawmakers can think of. Because of these issues, we have ended up with what is being included right now, which could potentially be interpreted and enforced in ways that would be very bad for crypto innovation in the United States, which is of course where a lot of crypto products are based off, so that would have a noteworthy effect on the crypto markets as a whole. There are two major issues that people have with the proposed laws in their current forms. First, validators of blockchains that do not use proof of stake or proof of work would be considered brokers under the new laws, which would make them responsible for keeping track of everything that is done in every transaction they validate on the blockchain and then reporting that in a tax form at the end of every year for each and every uh, user on the blockchain that has been using their blocks basically. Of course, that would be practically impossible as not all transactions are even possible to see what is being done due to encryption and complex multi-step transactions. This would make it so people in the United States would likely no longer be able to take part in validating for blockchains outside of proof of work or proof of stake. While those are the two most common consensus mechanisms, many networks use a combination of proof of stake and something else such as proof of authority or delegated proof of stake, and there is no clarification as to how that would be treated. The second and even worse part of the bill is that developers of decentralized protocols would also be considered brokers for all activity that happened on those protocols in spite of the fact that a lot of the time, they simply create a service, put it on the blockchain, then leave it to be used by others. If this were to be passed, DAP developers in the US would not only have to enforce some form of KYC on all users, but also record all transactions from their protocols and report them in a tax form at the end of the year. Once again, this would likely end up just causing developers to be unable to continue working in the United States. Right now, this sounds fairly bad, but there is an amendment proposed that would exclude all types of consensus mechanisms and protocol developers from these laws, which would make a big positive difference. If there are not any delays, these laws could be voted on as soon as Sunday evening in the United States, but it would not be surprising to see voting pushed back to the later parts of the week. 
If you live in the US, you can actually call or email your senators to tell them to support the widen Loomis Tume uh, or Tommy amendment, which is the pro crypto amendment. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on, you can also follow me on Twitter. If these laws do end up being passed, uh, it will not be the end of the world for crypto. And uh, I will definitely make a video going more in depth on the final wording of them and the effects that they will have. But yeah, uh, if this does not pass, or at the very least, if we end up seeing the Wyden Loomis Tommy amendment being passed, that would be a huge step for the short term of crypto at the very least. So next up, guys, I want to talk about a couple of projects which are actually uh, supporting the channel. You got the disclaimers down in the description as usual. But first off, I want to talk about DeFi of Thrones. So for those of you who missed my original video on DeFi of Thrones, it is a market prediction platform where users can bet on what project they think will have the best performance over a set time period, and this is called a war. If you choose the winning project, you get your original bet back along with a proportionate share of 85% of the losing side's bets. Since the last time I covered this project, volume in the prediction wars has been increasing significantly, which is a sign of the platform's growth and increasing awareness of it. This is, of course, a good sign in general, but it is also good because deflation of the native.x token is linked to the volume on the platform, so as more people participate in wars, more .x is burnt. 5% of all losing bets are burnt. This makes the token deflationary as the maximum supply had already been reached at the deployment of the project, so there are no inflationary aspects as with uh, most other projects. Another thing uh, that is important, and this is another part of the project, that is the NFTs that are integrated into it. NFT collectible cards are issued in limited quantities for different DeFi and crypto projects such as the ones shown here. These NFTs can be purchased with mana, which is earned by participating in wars, or by purchasing them on OpenSea, where the collection has been verified. If we take a look at the roadmap, we can see that the use cases for these NFTs are going to be implemented in Q4 later this year. Before then, however, some other roadmap goals are increasing liquidity on exchanges, adding a decentralized lottery, implementing uh, tiers and rank systems, and much, much more. If you want to give the platform a try for yourself, it is available on Polygon, so you do not need to worry about any expensive gas fees, which is, of course, very nice. And Polygon, in general, is a, uh, you know, a blockchain I definitely like. So new wars are organized several times per week, so there are plenty of different opportunities to choose a project you think will do well. So you can earn double up there if you're a holder of the project and if you're able to win the bet here. Of course, you're uh, going to make more money uh, apart from your asset going up in price. Moving on, a project I have not covered before is Verso, a decentralized financial product marketplace on Avalanche focused on connecting the traditional finance system to DeFi. Businesses within the regulated financial service industry unfortunately cannot take advantage of most DeFi protocols due to their unregulated nature. This is where uh, Verso and its proprietary smart contracts comes into play to facilitate the distribution and product-specific money flow between service providers, financial institutions, and of course their customers. As we all know, there is far more money in traditional finance than in DeFi right now, so projects such as Verso working to provide access points for that money to enter DeFi have huge potential if they are successful. The roadmap is shown here with some goals for quarter 3 and the public release coming in quarter 4 of this year. Next up is Token Place, a trading tool to consolidate everything you need to trade crypto into a single interface. Anybody who trades actively knows how inconvenient it can be to need different accounts across a very wide variety of exchanges to be able to trade all the coins you want to trade. With Token Place, you can trade across all your different exchange accounts from one single access point by importing accounts from exchanges through API keys as shown here. Not only does this make it simpler to trade across multiple exchanges, but it also provides users with an easy way to see and track all their exchange balances as well as deposit and withdraw funds from accounts. 
Additionally, token place provides all types of orders such as limits, markets, stops, trailing stops, stop takes, and much more with a single click. That alone is a great feature as many exchanges do not offer all order types in a convenient way. It is quick and easy to sign up for token place and the entire platform has been constructed to be uh, responsive and fast. Now the last project I want to talk about today is uh, DCT DAO, a decentralized governance system that provides cross-chain interoperability to different blockchains including Polkadot and others while also providing advanced quantum resistant security. The DCT DAO token is currently available on Ethereum and Avalanche. Not only is the DCT DAO DEX interoperable and secure, but it also is gasless and scalable. DCT DAO is built on the fast, scalable, and cost-effective Decor blockchain. The creators of Decor are working alongside some of the most respected Expected quantum security companies in Europe and in North America so that uh, the chain can be upgraded and fully ready for a quantum future as that technology continues to progress. So the roadmap is shown here and in quarter four of this year some goals are the uh, cross-chain beta, new exchanges and wrapping more protocols. In Q1 of 2022 and beyond, they are planning the cross-chain launch, governance platform, and the alpha quantum proof decor. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.